Ray Dalio's big shorts against Europe. So throughout this video, I'll be breaking down why the largest hedge fund in the world, Bridgewater Capital, run here by Ray Dalio, is shorting Europe at the quantity of $10.5 billion. If you read his most recent book, The Changing World Order, this is no surprise at all. If you're a student of history, if you study these things, it's really not surprising. And throughout this video, I'll be breaking it down, why he's doing this, and really, in my opinion, why kind of this number one company is the most interesting to me that he's shorting here, which is ASML. Now, this is a company that's actually very compelling. I've been talking about, you know, the semiconductor shortage has happened over the pandemic with the supply chain shortages. And if you look at the really squeeze supply in Taiwan, where they produce a lot of these, now new countries are starting to go, okay, when there's a supply chain issue, they start building infrastructure around it. But when they kind of overproduce this infrastructure, it can cause a little bit of a glut. And this is something that I think is part of his thesis and is really quite interesting because this company is really like leading the charge in this. They're basically creating these super, super micro microchips. So really, really tiny chips um, printed on silicons. They use the, these really advanced machines that are going for around five to six million dollars per machine. If you actually look at the, the company's numbers um, and kind of break it down in that way, they're really not selling a ton of these. There's two main companies that they're selling to, but these companies are shorting supply. And this is kind of part of his thesis, in my opinion. Um, and it's really quite interesting. So a lot of these companies, in my opinion, are, are great, but the problem is the valuations. And that's where kind of Bridgewater comes in and they're going, hey, this is a big problem. You know, they actually recently doubled the short bets. So it was around $5.7 billion here. Um, but now they've increased this to over $10.5 billion. Um, originally, it was 18 short positions. And again, I think this is partially kind of a hedging position, but also ties in with this really issue that we've seen throughout this whole year. And I, you know, I talked about this, in my personal opinion, the first domino in this effect, this was before the whole Russia-Ukraine situation was even happening, um, was Kazakhstan. I talked about this when I was here in Bogota, Colombia, pretty late at night, but uh, it was this Russia-Ukraine um, conflict that was going on you know, before the war. Kazakhstan, um, you know, it was this big problem where they actually had Russia come in. And in this case, I was talking about Gazprom, you know, how this company, I thought for the long term, really, really impressive. You know, it's actually owned by the Russian government. So a little bit controversial there, but uh, quite interesting thesis because they supply a ton of natural resources to Europe. And now it's really playing out, right? So Germany facing a gas crisis now, um, European gas crisis has global ripple effects. A lot of these things tying in to Ray Dalio's short position, right? So at the end of the day, commodities is the most important thing. And that's why, you know, in his book, The Changing World Order, in the West and the East, how these things are splitting. Well, the West for a long time has kind of been number one, has been in that top position. And the East is really commodity rich. If you look at Russia, if you look at China, a lot of these countries, which Russia really shouldn't even be just one country, it's massive. Um, they're very, very commodity rich. Whereas, you know, the US global reserve currency, now it's kind of in speculation that maybe some things are shifting um, and along with global trade, right? So. All these things playing out. I think Ray Dalio is quite smart in this this current Thanks situation. A quick break from today's video to thank our partner Apollo FinTech. As you know, they own thousands of acres of land in Southern Africa, and they recently have some amazing developments for GSX or Gold Secured Currency, who actually owns all those thousands of acres of land in a decentralized manner. They provide a lot of blockchain technology for emerging markets. I've worked with Apollo FinTech for a long time. I love these developments, but these two biggest wins so far are actually located in Zimbabwe. These are both two very significant structures. So the first is about 100 miles from the capital Harare and the second is actually right next to Mozambique. Now the second one is the one that's most interesting because of this amazing gold reef mining situation they have set up which essentially allows you to mine way more gold per hour because with traditional shaft mining this takes a very very long time but with reef essentially what it means is the mine is actually a lot closer to the surface of the earth so you don't need as much equipment it's a lot less hazardous and dangerous so this is amazing they're actually doing a ton of new developments this is just one of the most interesting updates there's a lot going on here with apollo fintech definitely follow along everything will be linked down below they're also moving into zambia like i said before so stay up to date with gold secured currency that's all let's turn back to the video enjoy i mean at the end of the day europe is definitely on the decline it is not growing at all if anything it's stagnant so um this is kind of interesting I'll, I'll break down this article a little bit so ray delius bridgewater has amped up his bet against european stocks by some 500 percent bridgewater earlier this month disclosed a range of short bets in excess of 1.5 billion dollars according to analysis of regulatory filings by research firm breakpoint the hedge fund's most recent filings show that it holds now close to $9 billion in short position. So again, now this has been confirmed to be around $10.5 billion. And talking about this, it's pretty clear that Europe is in the decline, like it's like they say. So given the deterioration in fundamentals and high inflation, I'm not surprised they feel that this may be the beginning 
and rather the end of the correction. So, you know, the European Central Bank has came out and said, yes, we're going to have to keep, continue to increase interest rates. So what does that mean? Will the squeeze and supply of capital when in, interest rates are lower? Capital is being lent out easily so people can get loans, all these different things. But in this current situation, monetary tightening, um, this is where people get very, very scared. But again, in the markets, it's, it's always a lagging effect, right? You're pricing in the psychology of how people will kind of value these assets at future prices. So in this case, this is very, very smart because companies like this, ASML, again, doing great things. Really, at the end of the day, the future of technology are in companies like this. I find it very interesting, you know, with these you know, new VR companies kind of trying to basically create technology for, you know, the metaverse, this metaverse investing stuff, along with Apple kind of maybe coming out with these glasses, right? If you think about glasses like this, these are blue blockers. Um, if you wanted to have a, a chip in here, like a, a semiconductor chip or a microchip in here, well, companies like ASML, basically they have these giant machines that are very, very expensive at this point. Um, that again, they provide like 70% to these top two companies. I think it's like Nikon and one other. I can't remember exactly. But um, if you want, I can do a deep dive valuation on the stock. Um, I'm considering doing that on the channel. You know, deep dive valuations. I personally do this, but you know, I don't know if you guys are interested in these different things. Um, but I, I more like to talk about narratives on this channel. And with this, um, you know, to, to have tiny chips like this and something like this, or let's say like Apple, you know, making these AirPods or phones, anything like that, um, the, the technology need, needs to get more and exponentially more advanced, right? So more and more expensive. However, people price this in, right? So when you see a company like this, it's, you know, so futuristic, they don't really have a lot of competitors. They're kind of the number one in that space. Well, you're, you might go, well, why is Ray Dalio shorting it? Well, he's not dumb. He's definitely done his own research on this. And I think it's, it's quite interesting. You know, a lot of these companies that are they're actually selling to are, you know, they're pushing off jobs, a lot of layoffs, and they're, they're kind of lagging in growth. And at the end of the day, again, one of the things that I'm more interested in is the underlying commodity that's necessary for all these things. And I talked about this you know, in this video when I was here, I think I was near Cappadocia in Turkey, why I'm investing in lithium bi-weekly. You know, look at the lithium chart. I mean, look, look at it five years from now. It's pretty crazy. I mean, lithium, the, uh, the supply is very, very limited to emerging market countries. When you have this, yes, you can diversify the actual places where they're creating these machines that need lithium to run, but you cannot really like turn on a mine, like a lithium mine like that. Here, I'm actually near the lithium triangle. I was recently in Bolivia. Um, now I'm here in Argentina, kind of the northern tip. The northern tip of uh, Chile, Argentina, and the southern tip of Bolivia is kind of that lithium triangle. And that's kind of one of these areas where, yes, there's a lot of supply of lithium, same with Taiwan, and a lot of the manufacturing was coming out of Taiwan. But in this case, um, it's just not steady. And, and I personally think the better bet, if you're interested in kind of the long-term rise of this thing, is investing in lithium companies. Now, obviously with you know precious metals, you would invest in bullion. Lithium, you're not really gonna invest in like the actual lithium commodity itself, but companies that produce these, right? So mining companies are more interesting to me. However, in the short term, there could be some speculation on maybe you want to short them. It all depends. Um, personally, yes, I'm long-term bullish on lithium, but when someone like Ray Dalio is coming out and saying like, hey, you know, these European companies, I'm not bullish on for the long term. Um, this is something that I at least get interested in. So I'm curious what you guys think about this. Um, you know, I'm happy to do another video on it, but at the end of the day, there's, there's a lot he's shorting here, you know, 28 European companies he's shorting in total. Um, but yeah, I'm curious what you guys think. I'm about to go head out for some Makis here in Salta, Argentina. I'll be posting more videos, you know, kind of from my travels, looking at real estate, different opportunities around the world. So if you guys want any different style of video, just let me know in the comments. Um, again, I might make a part two to this. This was kind of just an introduction on why he's doing this, kind of the basic narrative around this. But as always, invest global. If you guys enjoyed the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, stay up to date, hit the notification bell and click all. All the much watched videos are down below in the description, along with the pinned comments. There'll be timestamps throughout this video. Invest global, and until next time.